Hello. Now all of these components you see on this bit of PCB were designed by myself. They were they are specials as they are just came straight out of my old items box and I decided to make a 3D model for easy EDA out of them. You see this potentiometer here, I've made it complete with solder pins for it to solder to. It's just a normal potentiometer, not a PCB mounting type. So I've provided these pins for it, which will be soldered to it. And also this skeleton jack, I don't think you'll find a PCB mounted skeleton jack anywhere on the internet. So I've just added these these brass or rather copper pins to represent the connections to the tags and provided some pads for them. This is a conventional PCB mount socket. This is a bul a bulgin a bulgin a stereo switch socket with normal solder tags on and I've made slotted holes for it. And also a relay here with all these solder tags, which I've made PCB mounting. This one is a four pole, 24 volt relay. So in this video, I'm going to show another fairly complex component uh, that I'm going to make. It's a six pole PCB mounting relay. And, uh, and it's actually designed to go onto a PCB. It's got proper PCB mounting tags. In, in actual fact, it's now obsolete. You can't buy them. So I've got uh, one or two of these lurking about. And uh, I want to be able to put them on PCB. So I'm going to make a, an easy EDA component from it. And here it is. As you see, it's an A2810 12 volt Swiss made relay. Having six changeover contacts. Three rows across the top and then the two coil tags at the bottom. It's quite a compact little relay this and I'm sure there will come a time when I need uh, a 3D model for easy EDA to mount this on a PCB. So here we go making a 3D model of a six pole relay. changeover for easy EDA. Now the first thing I normally do is to make a, a little sketch of everything I'll need to make the footprint. And the sketch doesn't have to be terribly elegant. Just have a look at this one. All the relevant information is here. The full name, 12 volt, six pole changeover PCB relay. And I've put a, a little diagram of the part I think is necessary. Two millimeters diameter, 1.25 hole. The pins are 1.1. So everything is in here. So it's just as well to make yourself a little sketch. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name. Right click, rename, 12 volt underscore PCB underscore And then the first item is going to be rectangle. The case. Now the case I see one of my sketch is 34 wide by 30 high. 34 tab 30. Return. P for pull. And I measured it as 20 millimeters deep. Of course, we now need to make it into a shell. So we'll choose the shell tool here. Now the, it's one millimeter there and we need it 0.7 thick. 0.7. And click on the surface and there we have a box. So 
So we're now going to name this solid rename case. And also I'm going to right click on here and move it to a new component. Doing this prevents other parts merging into this, into the case, all becoming one, one solid piece. So now we've got a case which comprises a solid part case. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to make are some pins. So we'll need to assign a surface to draw on. Select, select that, and V for vertical, make it square onto us. Now I'm just going to draw, I'm going to go right in because they're quite small, these pins. At the moment, we've got the snap to grid on. So the pins are tiny, they are 0.9 wide, 0.9. tab and 0.34 thick there we are very small so we'll go to select and grab it and move and now I'm going to move this up to this point here, select the pull tool, select this, and the pins are three millimeters thick. Three, right. I want to put a taper on this end here, double click, and that puts <clears throat> that all the way around and drag. going to put a, a 0.1 millimeter taper on the end and I'm going to select that solid and call it rename it pin and I'm going to color it metallic Finish medium gloss. Now I'm going to S for select, go back to the design mode. V right. Now I'm going to move this pin into position. Select the pin. Move. And the first pin is 4.3 millimeters this way 4.3 and it's 0 0.7 this way 0 0.7 there's the first pin now I'm going to select that pin and I'm going to create a button remove it 10.16 10 point one six tab and tab to the count and make that three return. Now we select the pattern of three, create patterns again, and then select the red one and drag. Type in 25.4, return, release, and we've got a count of two here, we need six. I'm six, eight in tags. Perfect. Now we'll change that pattern name to contact pins. Oops, pins. 
Now that we've got the contact pins in, I'm going to put the solenoid pins in. Now these are just circular pins, so we'll put one on the corner here, which is my reference point. These are going to be 1.1 millimeters. And P for pull. Select it. These are going to be three millimeters long also. And we'll have a chamfer on here. Make sure it's a straight chamfer. It's going to drag a chamfer on. That looks nice. Color. I think it's right anyway. Yes. Metallic. Finish medium gloss. Right there. There it is. We'll place it in position, select it. It's the solid one. Tell you what, we'll change the name. Name. Now this is according to my drawing, 11.92 from the left, 11.92 and 6.44 from the bottom. Then we need another one. Holding the control key down, we drag away, we get another one, and it's 10.16. And that's all our pins. Now these solenoid pins are a bit dark, they're sort of matching the box at the moment, and they're not the same colour as the contact pins. So I'm going to... Change the colour. Right. Metallic. So that's better. And before we go any further, the first thing I'm going to do is rename this. Pins, pins. Now that I've made the case, I'm going to make a representation of the coil and the armature. And I've made a rough sketch, very rough sketch of these two items. The first thing I'm going to make is the armature and I'm going to use the bottom of the case to sketch on. So choose to select, select the bottom of the case. K gets me a sketch plane and V straightens it up for me. Now we're going to draw a rectangle in here. And according to my drawing, The rectangle is 31 by 27. So that's 31 tab 27. Escape. Now we want this in the center. We need to find the center of this somehow. And one way of doing this is to draw some ancillary lines in. So we can find the center, the little triangle appears here. I don't know if you can see that, a little triangle. I'll try and zoom in. Uh, control, Alt, Zoom. Right. There. There's a little triangle <coughs> which denotes the center. So we draw a line down. Then another one over here that finds the center. 
all in a cross. Now that's the centre of the inside of the box. But if we try and move to that, it doesn't find intersections. But the way around this is that you can actually draw a circle. It does find the intersection if you want to draw a circle. So we'll draw a circle. Any size will do. Then we select the select. Select these size of our box one at a time. we've got them all selected then the mouse so now that is showing us where the center of our box is our rectangle then we go up to and we can find the center point using this circle and that puts our rectangle in the middle of the case escape from that we can now go to trim and trim away all the bits we don't now need. And that's got rid of all those bits. And we can carry on doing the rest of the armature. So there's two more rectangles to put in, which according to my dimensions are uh, start four and a half millimeters in from this corner. So we can find that corner and press the shift key, which gives, gives us some temporary reference points. So our size is four and a half by four and a half. There it is. We draw a rectangle, which is 6.5 by 18. 6.5 tab 18. And another one, which is the same distance from this corner inwards. So again, shift. Four and a half by four and a half, and again six point five tab eighteen. That's all we need. We we'll now go back to normal normal zoom. And we're going to select the pull tool and pull it six millimeters. So now we've got a solid in here. There it is, solid. Rename that armature. And with it selected, we can drag it out. We've got some spurious surfaces there we don't need, so right click, delete. There's the armature. Might as well give it the right color now. So select it, display color. And then metallic. I'll give it a nice high gloss finish. The next thing is a rep representation of the, the coil. And I'm going to use the armature to aid this. So I'm going to go back to design mode 
select and select this back face here put a sketch plane there V now I'm going to make the coil shape away from this and then fit it on after it's finished so we're going to start with a rectangle which is 22 by 19 so just put it anywhere for the moment so it's 22 wide tab 19 Now it's got a, a rectangle in the middle which is 6 by 9 and is 6.5 millimeters in from the sides all the way around. So we need another rectangle. So if we find this corner and press the shift key we've got a temporary reference point. So now we can type 6.5 tab 6.5 return then we can put our 9 wide tab 6 right now I'm going to put some radii on here of 6 millimeters now we need another perimeter a half a millimeter in from that so we go to offset curve double click select the whole perimeter move in we've got one there 1.5 1 1.5 Okay, now we can go to the pull tool and we can pull this to 18 and this one to one millimeter one. That's one end. Now select S for select, select that end, sketch plane. V. Now we can double click again, select offset curve, double click, that's right, then 0.5, P for pull. This time we're going to pull it this way. Now the arrow's pointing that way, so I'm going to drag. In the opposite direction left click and drag which tells it I want it to go in that direction so now I type one millimeter and we've got the coil there are several things here we don't need which is that that surface so we can delete that another surface right click delete So there it is, and I'm going to recolor it. Well, first of all, rename it Coil. Display, I'm going to make it appear yellow, make it stand out. Now we want this to fit on there. So here's what we do to achieve that. Select the coil, go back to design, move. Now we want that rectangle to fit around this central portion. So if place that on that inside face that must must mate up with that face in there 
So we'll go to up to, right, and it's jumped across. So now that's in line. So we can take the hub again and pop it on the bottom and up to there. So now that's nicely fitted on there. And to put this inside the case, that edge there will need to go down to that floor area. So I'm going to capture the whole assembly there up at the top. So select all of it and we see we over here we've captured the armature and the coil which is exactly what we want go to move drag the hub onto that edge I will select the blue direction up to, choose the bottom, and there it is. That's our assembly finished. So there's a sort of representation of, of the six pole changeover relay. Of course, for the purposes of a 3D model, it doesn't really need to be this complex. You can make it as complex as you like. I've uh, just uh, done it this way to show several techniques that may be useful to you. Anyway, there it is. Now, it's named as 12 volt PCB relay. Down here, I'll go into zoom for that. So down here, we've got the name. And there's a little asterisk there, which means that it hasn't been saved yet. So, control S, right, I've used a control S and that's got rid of the little asterisk. Now, since the case in reality is transparent, I'm going to give it one final touch. So I'm going to select the case and go to display color and it's a, like a gray i'm going to make it for the opacity just enough here so there it is looking rather transparent now whether this will show up in easy ada i'm not sure but we'll find out <laughs>